Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building. From the gathering spot, we have Ryan Wilson and TK Peterson. Welcome, guys. Good to well, be here. Greenwood and the gathering yes. spot, sir. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's break it down for people that don't know. What is the gathering spot? So the Gathering Spot is a private network that we established in Atlanta in 2016. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're in the community business. We figure out how to connect people. Youngest member is 21, oldest is 90. So we spend time building connections, hosting programs, and then we have physical clubs across the country. Mm -hmm. We actually just had Mary J. Blige's... Um, strength of a Woman. Yeah, Strength yeah. of a Woman. Their whole entire event was there at the Gathering Spot. Mm -hmm. So how can people become a member if they wanted to become a member of the Gathering Spot? So you go online, right? We we have a process that starts there. You'll get in contact with the person on our membership team, and then we interview everybody, right? Mm -hmm. It's really important for us to get to know every single member of the community to make those connections that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. We've got to spend time really understanding what makes you, you. And then from there, we, we send out acceptances. So it kind of works like college. You yeah. you put your application in, and then we'll tell you uh, soon after if you're, you're, if you're a member. And how many members are there? There's 12,000 12, across, across the country. Across the country. Now, with membership, what does that include? What do I get with the membership, and how, how much is membership fees? And yeah. why would somebody want to do it? Gotcha. So the membership includes access to the physical locations we have. So in Atlanta, we have about 25,000 square feet. In D.C. and L.A., roughly the same size. So physical clubs that have event space, a private restaurant and bar, and a workspace with private offices and conference rooms, the thought being that anything you would need to do in a modern day's worth of work you can do inside of the space, both professional and social. And then we have our own content platform, digital platform there, and uh, local perks and, and different benefits. But the biggest um, attraction to being a part of, of the community is that one another. You're meeting other people who are... are like-minded and highly driven and see value in being part of something that's larger than themselves. So very similar to college where you're meeting people who are lifelong friends and, and partners and different things. This is how you keep that connectivity beyond the educational setting and with you for the rest of your life, hopefully. Interestingly mm -hmm. enough, you know, when I um, started my private label store in Detroit, the meeting that I had with my partner, Mikey, was at the gathering spot. So that's where we actually had our first initial meeting Boom. in person to kind of talk about getting things started. So like like stories like that mm -hmm. are what it's about yes. for us. Like we mm -hmm. look now, it's been almost seven, seven years since TGS opened mm -hmm. and there's so many business partners and relationships. We even have TGS babies where people yeah. are like, I met <laughs> I met at TGS and now now look at us. Yeah. That's why we started it. You like, we wanted... a good side piece at the gathering spot. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey look, there, there, there are a lot of different lot relationships, of relationships that have been created. That's all I'll say. And that's, that's again, though, when we were talking about this in 2013, that was the plan. Like how mm -hmm. do we create, yes, a place, but a network where we can build with one another, right? Knowing that there's not enough places around the country to be able to do that. So uh, we started in Atlanta, but we're building them all over the country now. Now, what is membership fees? How, how much does it cost to be a membership? And can I bring in people? Because, yeah. you know, how, how does that work? Yeah, great question. Um, The fees are, it's $200 a month or $2,000 for the year to be a member of the gathering spot. And yeah, you're allowed three guests pretty much at any time without giving advance notice. If you need more than that, we ask that you reach out so we can make sure that there's enough um, space for your, for your guests. What made you decide Atlanta was the right place to start? I think Atlanta is one of the more important cities in the country, right? And we, we've believed that for a really long yep. time. But if you look between the colleges and universities, mm -hmm. the big businesses that are there, the small businesses and startups that are there, and then you've got the culture that's coming out of the city, right? That special sauce, we couldn't, we couldn't pass that up, right? That's what you see inside of the club. You'll see people who are wearing suits and ties yep. sitting next to people who are wearing T-shirts and jeans, right? And so our goal is to try to figure out how to make them talk to each other but you have to be in a city that understands and kind of moves in that way already. And so we uh, we planted it in Atlanta, but we're in the community business. So, I mean, we're at this point able to do this work mm -hmm. all over the country. Yep. And now, then D.C., right, also? So, yep. yeah, D.C. was the second one. Mm -hmm. And then we recently opened another in Los Angeles. And that's the physical clubs. But we have membership communities, actually one here in New York, yep. Chicago, uh, Detroit, Houston, Charlotte. So there are TGS folks everywhere. Now, I was going to ask, you know, Drake talks about uh, kicking it with Jack Harlow at the gathering yeah. spot. So you have celebrities as well that are members, or do you have celebrities that, you know, come through because they feel safe? They, I used to always feel... see T.I. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Tim's our brother, man. He, mm -hmm. he is a longtime supporter, showed us a lot of love. The whole Grand Hustle team, we're forever um, thankful for their support. 
very early on. But yeah, we have we have celebrity members. Oftentimes we have a lot of people who um the team around the the celebrity is oftentimes the member. So they're like manager, their um assistant, their um attorney. So the apparatus around them. And then because of that they're familiar with the space and because it's a, a private community, um they have you know, private get togethers regularly. So we're fortunate that um, we've we've worked with Drake and the OVO team uh, several times over the years. It's always a great time with them. Now, how, why would you turn somebody down if, if they wanted to become a member? Why would you turn them down? So we're, we're looking for people who are connectors, right? So if you're one of those people that likes to walk in rooms and just pass out your business card and not say anything and the the interaction is really transactional, you're probably not a good fit for TGS. Uh, but get it, Envy. Uh, <laughs> like th- this is about relationships right yeah. so if you're not a person that displays interest in building real relationships mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this is probably not the best environment for, me, for you i mean we ask a lot of questions in our interview but the main thing that we're asking and, and the question that everyone gets is what animates you outside of the office yeah. mm-hmm. and we like we really care about the answer to that question like you have to talk to us about that other thing that you're passionate about that's what we ultimately build programs around so it's important to to get to you like the real you and mm-hmm. if you don't want to bring that to the table again like this is probably not the best place for you no, all right this... now this always fascinates me so i want to get to the greenwood part okay where yeah. you guys have done this whole partnership now the wording is they did greenwood acquired the gathering spot and so as people who have built this up right as a baby from the beginning what was the decision that what was the thinking behind you making that decision to go into business with greenwood so there are a lot of things in this right but first and foremost if you look at what we've been talking about at TGS for years, right? So the pandemic hits and we we had a very vocal campaign called We All We Got. Yeah. And the thing that we were talking about was we've got to support one another and like be radical in that support. Mm-hmm. That's us talking a lot though about money, right? Mm-hmm. And so the conversation that was happening a lot in the community is that we just don't have access to the right resources and the right tools to be able to advance our personal and our business interests. So what we're doing with Greenwood is is something that that really is is special, right? When you hear the term black on black, a lot of times that phrase doesn't end positively, but in this this context it does, right? This is black on black M&A and we're 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 working together to build a really really big company knowing that if we bring the community that we have at TGS now together with the financial tools and resources that Greenwood has, those those two things together are super super powerful. So mm-hmm. we decided it was it was better to go with each yes. other than to to be trying to build a business separately. Now, are, are black people only allowed at the gathering spot? That's what I <laughs> you just said Jack Harlow was there. <laughs> no, I'm saying, but, but I don't know if he's a member. He might have came with somebody else. That's what, that's what I'm asking. That would so be racist. The, both I mean, both business have racist clubs against us. I'm just asking. <laughs> no, <laughs> right? no, so look, we are we are specific at TGS mm-hmm. and at Greenwood that while everybody is welcome, mm-hmm. we are speaking to our community directly Mm -hmm. right and so that is where we are focused right we're talking to to black folks and have never mixed words about that it's important for us to have places you mentioned safety earlier Mm -hmm. we have to have places where we are safe and can build and grow with one another Mm -hmm. so again everyone's welcome but we are definitely specific about where where we have a perspective i think something that ryan has said over the years that's true is that there's places where we're tolerated or accepted. This is a place that was built for us. This is black owned, we're black celebrated. managed, black operated. Absolutely. This is our platform. Now, let me ask you this. So we talk about working in tandem, right? Black on black, but in a positive way. Yes, indeed. So yeah. why acquiring and not a partnership? So, I mean, that really got down to just the the way that the, the best way to construct the deal, mm-hmm. right? I mean, Greenwood is a big platform, right? If you look at just technology companies generally, uh, the way that they're able to scale is a little bit different than what we were we were doing. Mm-hmm. But the way that this works truly day to day is that we are partnering, right? Like our teams are working with one another. We I think this is an example of like, again, for other business owners that are out there, it's possible to find arrangements. Like, I mean, we've been working together for a long time. Yeah. We just have expanded the family and, and are uh, proud to work with the Greenwood team day mm-hmm. in and day out. Now, how difficult was it to get everything together? I mean, starting off saying you want to have a membership club and... <laughs> How difficult was that? Because you need a vision, and it has to be a vision of not just one or two people. You need a bunch of people, yes, right? Because yeah. if village. I want to join a membership type of club, I can't just, uh, it's just me and one person. You're like, you need numerous people. So how difficult was that? Um, big difficult. Big difficult. Uh, so the, the hardest thing, as always, you guys know as entrepreneurs as well, is you need capital, mm-hmm. which is the, the first step. So 
Um, something we talk about is that we got 97 no's before we got the first yes when it came to, to get an investor. And then when you finally make it to the part where you have the capital to build out the location, then you start operating the business. And like you said, we're a private membership club and people want to see it before they sign up and you don't want to come to a place that doesn't have anyone in there. So it was, it was we say hand-to-hand -hand combat. Every day we went out and we were in Atlanta and meeting as many people as possible. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we're just getting to the place, honestly, where we can talk about that part of mm -hmm. the journey. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was like, super rough. Yeah. A lot of people told us no. And, like, not the, like, no, I'm not interested, polite no's. We were getting, like, no, like, get out of my office. I don't <laughs> like this. You're yeah. going to fail no's. Mm. And, you know, it, it took just us continuing to believe that, like, the thing that we saw that could really be a thing that we, like, could build – we just had to figure out how to make that happen. Like we see this as as like assignment work, right? This is yeah. something that we feel mm -hmm. uniquely called to do, and didn't want that part of the process to uh, to stop us. But I mean, when you don't get paid for years, right? It, it 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 you know it's difficult. Yeah. And we we spent the first several years of the business really trying to figure out one how to make it happen, mm -hmm. but then two how to keep it on strong you financial pay everybody yes. else that works for you around you and you <laughs> yeah. cannot pay yourself at first no. all the money goes back into the business yeah. so yeah. it'll be the people that work for you but they're the ones that are making money while you're struggling. Uh, yeah there were years where it was like <laughs> everybody in this joint is making more money than us like right. truly every, mm -hmm. we weren't paying ourselves anything <laughs> <laughs> but i mean you you got to see it through i mean we 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 kept going knowing that like there would be a day where we'd be able to participate too. Mm -hmm. And we just had to stick around long enough to make that happen. And that's why, oh, so oh. that's gonna say, that's why we're forever grateful to the, to the founding members of, of the club, um, particularly in Atlanta, because they, they bet on two guys and, and, a, and a concept way before there was any proof in the pudding. So we had people who signed up in 2015 to become members just because they, they, they met us or they saw, uh, they saw a post on Instagram and they just liked the concept and they wanted to truly support and that's why, like, every time we talk, we, we always say, like, first and foremost, we are we just work here and we're happy to serve and be a part um, of this organization. But it's member-led. It's all about the members and the 12,000-plus people who have invested, but particularly the, the people in Atlanta, the founding members there who, who made it possible. Um, salute to Mayor Dickens in, in, in Atlanta, who's Absolutely. a founding member of the club who recently got elected as a mayor of Atlanta. Like, that's how, that's how long and deep-rooted we are in that community. I was going to ask, so now... Who handles checks and balances, right? $200 a month. S sometimes a $200 is going to get declined. So who calls that person? And if that person decides to come to the gathering spot after they've been declined six times, who says excuse me? Ryan calls you personally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Look, Ryan. Uh, my, my grandmother used to say, I ain't talking about anybody, but I'm talking about somebody. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we, we have a, a, a team internally, yeah. right? So that's actually TK's responsibility mm -hmm. inside of the business. <laughs> yes, um, TK, TK. Yeah, yeah. It's like so, yeah. so for everybody out there, talk to TK. Yes, um, yes. Mm -hmm. But honestly, that hasn't been a huge problem for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, this there's a lot of things that you get with a TGS membership. And, you know, yes, access to the space itself and the programs, but like the people, right? And so mm -hmm. people don't want to miss out on being able to continue to build those relationships. Mm -hmm. so. What about pictures? Can you take pictures in the gathering spot? So you are you are allowed to take pictures mm -hmm. of yourself. Of yourself yeah. You are not allowed to take pictures of other people. So you right? can't sneak and be like, oh, look, yeah, no, we don't do that. Drake we're, is in here. We don't do that. So no, we've had a lot of special moments at TGS, but and I'll knock on wood, but none of those things have have gone out you know, to the public. Right? People take it seriously. Honestly, one of the most special moments we we were fortunate that we hosted John Singleton back in 2016, his last um, his last in speaking engagement before he um, unfortunately passed, and. We're celebrating the 25th anniversary of Boys in the Hood. Um, this was brought to us thanks to our brother Shaka Zulu um, at DTP. And he he was supposed to be like a 30-minute talk, and he ends up speaking for like two and a half hours mm. because he's so comfortable and he's trusted in the room. And towards the end, he's like, hey, I'm going to show you something I'm working on. Like, I just got to trust y'all. Please, like, don't record any of this and don't show anyone. And he shows us, like, the first 15 minutes of Snowfall. Oh, mm. Didn't leak, right? Yeah. Because everyone understands it's a community, mm -hmm. so you can't, like, you can't violate that trust. Yeah. And so, you know, we, that was, I mean, there's many special moments yes. at this point that are like that, where people just took seriously the fact that we're there for one another, and we've got to, we've got to be responsible to one another in that way. Mm -hmm. That's so dope. And now working together as partners, I think it's important to talk about that balance too, because I think a lot of times in business, getting into partnerships with the right people means so much. So what are the skills that you guys bring? Because I think sometimes 
I've had experiences where you can't go into business with somebody who y'all both do the same exact no. thing. Yeah. It has to be like, this is my responsibility. You said TK's responsibility is calling people whose uh, credit card didn't go through. <laughs> but what are, the, what are the ways that you guys work together that makes it happen? Because sometimes we want to do things. We don't want to do it on our own. We want to find the right partner, mm-hmm. but it's not easy. Yeah. Go ahead. I was say, the, the, the fortunate thing is that we have complementary skill sets. So Ryan is a lawyer by training. He went to Georgetown Law, all that good stuff. And I studied finance and accounting. I was a portfolio manager before I started doing this. Um, so we have defined lanes. And I think that is that is a critical um, part of it. And I don't, I don't want to downplay the friendship part. That is important because there's a level of trust that um, has to occur for a partnership to work mm-hmm. properly. Like there's there's no one I speak to more often than Ryan. There's There's no move that I make that he's not aware of because everything we do impacts the other person and impacts the business. So um, if we weren't friends, I, wasn't, I wouldn't be sure how long it would take to develop that like level of like, hey, I'm about to do, go do this, I'm going to visit my mom, I'm going to do that. Um, and the, like having defined areas where it's like, if it's something with marketing or our strategy, like that's Ryan's lane, we're going to do that. If it's like, I want to move to this accounting platform, I want to set up this type of payment processing system, it's like, okay, like TK said it, let's do that. And having having your areas and spheres, I think, are, are are core parts of being able to operate as a as a partnership and be friends. And then understanding that, like, the the truth is, like, the dynamic of our friendship has changed because we're business partners. Mm-hmm. And like, we were at his his family's house on Sunday, and we still end up talking about work because, like, <laughs> that's that's like, that's what we can do. I just have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but we're we're honest with each other. Mm-hmm. We have been the entire time. Like, we don't we don't mix words with each other. We hold each other super accountable. Mm-hmm. So if I drop the ball, he tells me. Mm-hmm. He drops the ball, I tell him. Yeah. Right, and we've tried to keep ego out of this. Right, I mean, even now working with new partners, we have the same sort of energy. Right, where we're just trying to get the thing done. Like, yeah. what is the best way to get there? And if you got the skill set to do it, then like, go in the game. Like, yeah. shoot the shot. Right, we we we've always tried to to keep the mission ahead of any of the personal mm-hmm. stuff. Because some people's friendships get damaged over working together too. Right. And so that's why I think that's important because mm-hmm. we've seen that happen a lot where people yeah. fall out with each other. So when y'all yeah. don't agree on things, what happens? So we, we set ground rules. So I'll, I'll say this first. We set ground rules at the beginning of this process mm-hmm. and we, we planned out when we had those, like when we had these moments, how are we going to get through mm-hmm. them, right? And so it's in our operating documents. It's a part of how we have like understood how we we're going to talk to each other. And that's helped, right? Because mm-hmm. when a thing happens... We go back to that playbook and are able to march through. Okay, so this is the decision. And again, we like we have different swim lanes. So yep. if it's something that ultimately is in his lane, he's got to be the person that 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 when lose or draw, it's your it's your it's yeah, on you. Yeah. yeah. And and he respects the same thing when when it's something that's in in my universe. So mm-hmm. um, like a hundred, like it'll be like Ryan would be like, hey, I wanted like I want to do this activation. I want to invest in this. And I'm like, eh, I'm not sure if I want to do it to that level. And it's like. Sometimes it's okay, bet like we can we can scale it down. Other times it's like no, like it's really important that we do this. So I'm like, all right, if we're gonna shift some budget over there, it better hit. <laughs> I mean, I'll give I'll give you an example. So a year ago, I went to TK and I was like, hey, look, we're opening a club in DC, mm-hmm. and I want to fly a private plane with all of the members to the club. And he was like, cool, we'll get like you know 10, 12 seater or something. And I was like, no, 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 like we need to fly like a over 100 thing. people. Like, and he was like, ah, oh, like I don't. What you mean? A hundred people? Like, how are we gonna do that? I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, like you gotta figure that part out. But like, we gotta figure out how to get our folks up to DC. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, I did my part of the the work. He did his part, and we flew the plane up. And it was so, a beautiful so experience. The 747. It was a 737. Yeah, 737. 737. Yeah. But yeah, it was a beautiful experience. Mm-hmm. All the members from Atlanta that wanted to go. So who's sitting in the front of the plane? Who's sitting in the back? Like, how do you? Uh, because, see, uh, you about to get into the. <laughs> <to> the <laughs> plane, right? T. Now I'm a member. You a member? Who get that first uh, class? Uh, who get well, the back? Even though it's a private uh, plane. Look, I, I, somebody I, sitting in the front. Somebody sitting in the back. Well, Emmy, like you would be in the back because I've been to the gathering spot and you haven't. <laughs> oh so, no, that's fair. I will put it like this. I would, I, <laughs> I would just walk. Been fine. Been fine. <laughs> I was. I was in row thirty-two E. I put it like that. We were walking. You in on the middle part. seat? You look. I we had that problem. We were walking yeah. on. It was like, oh, oh, it's first come, first serve. What no, airline everybody does that? had seats, but like we weren't gonna sit up front, yeah. so we had to we had to rearrange yeah, well, things to just yeah get it where you. <laughs> We we flew. We were there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, flew, we were there. Now, well, how does things change now with Greenwood? Right. What are some of the added benefits that members get? 
So a, a couple of things, right? And there's there's things now and things that are coming. The things now, so members have the ability to to, to join the, the platform, right? You have access to the tool. You can get the card um, immediately. And we'll continue to see new products built mm -hmm. and developed for the entire community, right? And so, again, we've been talking about money for a really long time mm -hmm. at TGS. Our money just simply does not circulate enough times in the community. And so the work that we're going to be doing together is about trying to disrupt that. Right. I mean, our, I, we were looking at a stat uh, here recently. Ninety seven percent of black folks income is spent outside of the community and our, our dollar doesn't even circulate one time. Mm -hmm. So the real work between TGS and Greenwood is getting specific about that. Right. That we're going to we're going to highlight businesses. We're going to highlight people and we're going to get them the tools necessary to be successful all right, financially, which is a tool that we didn't have in our toolkit. Wow. Well, how can people become a member if they want to try to become a member? How do they become a member? <laughs> so you could you could join us. Uh, <laughs> go to the gatheringspot.club or go to Bank Greenwood. Right. We would love for you to be a member of both communities. Yep. It's a it, it's a really easy process on both fronts, and you can find us on social too. Can you interview Envy right now? Can I interview? Can Envy. I interview? Yeah, just for to see if you could qualify. Okay, let's do this. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, oh we okay. flipped the oh, head oh, around. Oh, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> we're getting serious. <laughs> Okay, so, I mean, we got to start off with the basics. So, like, what, what's your name and what do you do? Hi, my name is uh, Sean Casey. Rashawn. <laughs> I say Give Sean, your real name. <laughs> We're me. celebrating uh, yes, ourselves. Yes, my name is uh, Sean Casey, and I'm an entrepreneur. Okay. okay. And how long have you been doing that work? Uh, all my life, since I was 16 years old. Why right. do you like doing it? Um, well, I love money. But other than that, Ooh. I like to help people as That's well. I, I try to make sure <laughs> I uh, encourage uh, younger individuals uh, to do the right thing. See, growing up in Queens, I tell everybody this story all the time. I seen Clue, who was my neighbor, and if it wasn't for him, I don't know what I would do. He encouraged me to be a DJ, to follow you know, his heart and not be a drug dealer or do anything illegal. So I followed him and that's the reason I'm a DJ and I like to really encourage people to do the same. I'm taking well, notes of yeah. all the red flags. <laughs> <laughs> what What other ways do you give back to the community now? How do you like to stay involved? I um, mean, there's many different ways. I mean, we conduct seminars, which we teach uh, minorities, black and brown people, how to invest, whether mm -hmm. it's uh, by real estate uh, or it's... Uh, Anything financially, whether it's uh, opening up their own business, opening up their own store. And, of course, we do the typical turkey drives, toys for tots, and things like that that I feel like everybody does. But we do that, too, to the communities. You sounded good to me. You sounded like a, a gathering spot member. Like, you want to hear like, what my thoughts are? Yeah, yes, yeah, please. Yeah. What are the red flags? I'm, I'm interested. All right. So the fact that he led with he loves money, and then he also said that he has these seminars that he does, it feels like he's coming to just get to people sell to, stuff. Yeah. But I'm being yeah. honest. Are you asking what I'm, I'm being honest? I, then I, he also did some name dropping. He mentioned Clue being his neighbor. No one asked that. <laughs> and so I just feel like I don't know if we want a groupie in the gathering <laughs> spot. Oh, wow, she called, called you a groupie. <laughs> Those are just my thoughts. Like, wow. Maybe you guys need me up as part of the interview. Thank you. Like, you can join, you can join the team. Like, you start, the start committee. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> start tomorrow. We're ready. I'm sorry, sir. You know what? In a year, you can... Let's say now we just said, okay, uh, we're going to have to decline his membership. Mm -hmm. Can he reapply like a year from wow. now? Wow. Well, you know, you know that's how uh, Lamborghini was created when the guy from Lamborghini <laughs> wanted to get a, a Ferrari. And Ferrari oh, gave so you're going to go start your own yes. gathering? Yes. That's another red flag. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I think that's true. Trademark infringement. Yeah, you know, wait, Hold so on. Like, Sounds what, like another red flag about, to me. Let's Sounds talk like about, about trademarks right. for a second. So, so, you know, the gather spot is a protected mark. Um, yeah. <laughs> but in all seriousness, like, the, the point for us at TGS <laughs> is not trying to keep everybody out, mm -hmm. right? Like, we do more things to have folks come in yeah. than, than anything, right? So it's a community-based business. So while mm -hmm. there are memberships that are part of the whole thing, the doors of the club are open. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we opened our doors for the first time in 2020 to any activist or organizer in the city that needed a place to organize, whether That's you dope. remember or not, right? And so it's stuff like that mm -hmm. that is it's serious work for us. Like, we have to mm -hmm. have places where we can build mm -hmm. genuinely. And, again, the same thing exists on the Greenwood side right now. Like, if you are currently not banked, underbanked, or just need a, a banking relationship where the institution has been built for you, mm -hmm. Greenwood is that platform. And seriously, with the gathering spot, when I launched my press juice business, which is back, uh, Drink mm. Fresh Juice, I did an event there that mm -hmm. you guys opened the doors for me to come in and bring the juices in and make some cocktails with these press juices. And it was amazing yeah. for me to even be able to tap into that network of people that you guys have access to. Thank you. Well, we're, that's what we're here for. If you have a business, mm -hmm. we're here to, to be supportive. We've got to be specific about that. True. Yeah. And, and it's not just entrepreneurs. If you if you don't have a business, it's still a great place for you to come in and meet people and and do social events and and mm -hmm. you know this edification is happening all the time. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's, it's really just about being connected. Like that is that's the biggest thing. It's about connection and, and collaboration and seeing value because um, you can start to get stifled if you if you just work in your one area. That's one of the big drivers for us. Like mm-hmm. I worked in finance. Ryan was um, in the legal field. And I started to feel like the only people I was meeting were people who worked in my specific type of finance. Like I worked in mortgage-backed securities. And I was only meeting MB? people who did that. What's that? Mortgage-backed securities. You know, he, uh, go ahead. <laughs> I know he's going to try to tap you after this. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> and that's, that's a good thing, though. That's, that is how we advance ourselves mm-hmm. by learning about someone. It's like, oh, you know, yeah. I, I do electrical work on the side. It's like, oh, I was, I was wondering about this project I had in my mm-hmm. house. And now you have that resource. And that's what that's about. It's like resource building and by knowing who's in your community. Absolutely. And like that's that was my favorite part of the work that we do. It's like if you have an idea or a concept or anything you want to share, like let's figure out how we can. There's there's enough for everyone. Let's figure out how we can all platform one another. You could do a real estate event there. I have done many, right? Like yeah, talk- and because that's oh, what he yeah. does. These real estate seminars. No, I mean it's it's truly built for that. And mm-hmm. so now, like the the second iteration of the business is we can now have the right financial instruments Mm -hmm. to now be able to start to supply the right resources to one another. Mm Because, like, we would have the conversation about real estate, but then a lot of folks would would be talking about, well, like, well, who do I partner with to actually get this deal done? We're about to be able to answer that question in a real way. Like, we we can be, we don't have to ask anybody for partnership. Mm -hmm. We can ask ourselves, right? Like, and Mm -hmm. we have the tools and the resources to do that ourselves without asking anybody. That's what TGS in Greenwood is, is about. What about buying the land where your um, locations are? Is Amen. That- yeah, it's important. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, and we, we know firsthand how difficult mm-hmm. it is to do that. I mean, we started this journey when we were 24. Yeah. And forget buying anything. People oh, yeah. weren't willing to even lease a space. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. sat in an office and watched a major landlord in town tell us, I will not lease you this space no matter how well capitalized you are. Like, quote, unquote. Yep. And so it is important to us to, like, we, we've got to encourage not only ourselves, mm-hmm. but everybody. We've got to, we've got to own own as much as we possibly can. The I, land right. I can't wait to write my book and talk about him in my book. Because, <laughs> hey, I, I mean, what's the rationale behind that? Just I don't I can't speak to the rationale. Mm-hmm. I can just say that there are there are a lot I of sees. industries where including banking, mm-hmm. right, where we have been consistently just pushed out of the mm-hmm. process and it is it is like way over time that we own those businesses mm-hmm. and those industries mm-hmm. and are starting to to do the stuff ourselves right it, this this is not about and as, as cliche as it sounds we are not trying to be invited to anybody's table in, anymore mm-hmm. right work we're trying to do is and the work that we're doing is about building our own table sincerely mm-hmm. because Absolutely. we we witnessed for years asking and getting kicked out the office, not being able to get a deal done, right? And so I, I don't want that experience for anybody else. It, it almost truly took us off of our, of our path. Wow. Well, well, Ryan listen, Wilson, TK Peterson, yes, thank you I for think joining you guys us, are so inspirational to me, just the way, because I remember when the gathering spot first started. My good friend Janae, yes, she was on Janae. board from the beach. She would always be like, we have to go to the gathering spot. And so just to see, you know, just how far you guys have come in this period of time. And I know it definitely wasn't easy. Some people probably felt like it wouldn't ever get done the way that it has, yeah. I congratulate you because it's a we, huge deal. Absolutely. And I think people watching this should all say, how can I be a member? How can I join the community? Even if you're not in Atlanta, D.C., L.A., like you said, there are communities yeah. in Chicago and Detroit and New York and other spaces where they can also be a member and support. Yeah, please please come join us and, and be a part of, of this collective. It's a, it's a really special time mm-hmm. for us as, as a company. And, you know, to TK's point earlier, we're just extreme. We can't, it, yeah. Yeah, we're just grateful. No. People like man. Janae, like like Shaka, like like the only reason we made it was because the community decided that they weren't gonna yeah. let the business go under. Yeah, even folks that y'all seen here, mm-hmm. I mean, Doctor Key, the Village Market, Pinky, mm-hmm. Slutty Vegan, and mm-hmm. like, we've been a part of this tribe together, mm-hmm. really growing together, and that 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 is something that we don't take lightly. And so, anybody that's interested in joining the work, uh, we'd love to to have have you at TGS or or at Greenwood. Mm-hmm. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us, and make sure you check out the gathering spot. And it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.